So what are some of the top advantages, disadvantages, and items to be aware of when it comes to whole life insurance policies that are specifically set up to maximize cash value? Let's begin with the advantages. I would start with three of them. The cash value is a safe, liquid, and tax-free area to position money. To provide a little bit more context to that, when I say a safe area to position money, it is an area we can position money that will continue to appreciate over time, regardless if things are going very, very well in the stock market and economy, or if things are going very, very poorly. If we look at financial crises in the past, 2008 is an excellent example. 2020, when COVID first hit and there was a lot of market uncertainty, in both cases, we saw a lot of people interested in whole life insurance, primarily for the cash value benefit. The reason why is because it was safe. It also provided a peace of mind. That cash value just continued to appreciate over time. When we look at the net growth rate, the internal rate of return, we'll typically see whole life insurance policies produce somewhere in the neighborhood of a 3 to 5% net internal rate of return, the net growth rate at the end of the day. That's if the policy is set up with one of the major mutual companies and designed with a minimum premium, meaning it's maximized for cash value. Number two, liquid. We can access the cash value anytime. A unique feature to a cash value life insurance policy are policy loans. Did you know that you can access a policy through a loan and when you borrow against that policy, you continue to receive dividends and interest on any money that's still in cash value and what you have loaned against the policy. It's very similar to borrowing against real estate. A lot of real estate investors are attracted to it for this reason. So the liquidity is very attractive in this particular case. And then tax-free. If I do things properly with a life insurance policy, I can access that cash value tax-free. Keep in mind, I said, if we do things properly, there are cases where we can trigger a taxable event with a life insurance policy that are very important to be aware of. So those are the top three advantages. There are more. If we transition into the disadvantages next, here, here it would be. Number one, the early years. I like to say that the first year is the worst year with any whole life insurance policy. If you've ever seen a traditional whole life insurance policy, it looked like this. You bought a death benefit. You had a premium and your first year cash value was zero or very, very close to zero. As time passed, eventually you saw your cash value build up, but it took greater than 10 years just to get your money back. I like to refer to that as an excellent example of exactly what not to do if cash value is your goal with a whole life insurance policy. So what we'll look for with a life insurance policy is a policy that's set up with minimum expenses, maximum cash value. Typically what we want to look for right out of the gates in the first year is somewhere between 80 and 90% of whatever our payment is in cash value immediately. That means if you pay in $10,000, you should see somewhere between $8,000 and $9,000 in cash value in the first year. The range will depend on the company and product that you select. Let's say it's a policy, however, that's set up for maximum cash value. Say it's 90% cash value. 90% of your payment is in cash value in the first year. That's still the worst year because you paid in $10,000 and you have $9,000. That's a 10% hit no matter how we slice it. As the years pass, however, it will get better and better. But a drawback for someone who is laser focused on the cash value will be the early years because I have those initial insurance expenses that will result in a negative hit on my cash value. The name of the game is minimizing the expenses as much as we legally can per the insurance company limits and the IRS limits, but those expenses are still there. So how do we minimize them? Typically, if we do things right, you'll see between 80 and 90% of your payment and cash value in the first year, and it will break even on average somewhere between three to five, sometimes three to six years. And then loan interest versus the growth rate. So I want to see what the loan interest rate is and you will see cases where the cost to borrow in a whole life insurance policy exceeds what the actual growth rate is, the internal rate of return. So I want transparency on exactly what the internal rate of return is, the net growth rate, not the dividend rate, but the net growth rate, and then see what the loan interest rate is so I know what they are and can make an informed decision beforehand. And that leads into items to be aware of. 
we've got tax-free. So yes, I can access the cash value tax-free if I do things properly, as we mentioned earlier. However, it's important to be aware of what could trigger a taxable event. One example is a MEC, which stands for Modified Endowment Contract. Another example is if you cash a policy out with a gain. The gains will be taxable to you as ordinary income, and that's the case if the policy is not a MEC. Another example is if I take out maximum loans and that policy lapses due to the loan interest exceeding the earnings on the policy, and I have a gain on the policy, that could also trigger a taxable event, and loan interest can also work against me as well. We've got content that provides details on exactly how that works. My point is, we do not want to take out a whole life insurance policy because we hear that it's tax-free and then it, and that attracts us only to find out after we've dedicated money to the product that we can run into a taxable event. That's where issues can arise. So having awareness on exactly how to use that cash value tax-free and how to prevent a taxable event from occurring is very beneficial. It's important to be aware of that. And then we've got growth versus loan interest, which is similar to the disadvantage we discussed when working with individuals who like to borrow against their life insurance policies. We see this with a lot of real estate investors we, look, we work with. What they want to see to simplify is simply, what is the policy growing by each year? Not the rate, but the dollar amount. What's the net dollar amount I'm receiving from the insurance company? If I look at dividends, guaranteed interest, everything, what am I getting? And then if I borrow against it, what am I paying in loan interest? This way I can see money coming in versus money going out of my pocket and see if I'm in the black or if I'm in the red. And does it make sense? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know. We'll see you on the next one. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.